Welcome back everyone. Today I thought it might be interesting to put through paces five different Bluetooth devices from Theo, from Blue Wave and from Radson, three different companies, to see how far away from a camera and a source we can get whilst maintaining good quality signal and how far we can get in theory where we can have just a wishy-washy signal. And of course this is all line of sight outside in quote-unquote the countryside of Japan so there's not a lot of interference but this is just a theoretical video to show you just how far you can get and if the 10 meters or the 20 meters that are advertised on the back of one of these devices or on their web page are accurate if they're not it's a thumbs down if they are accurate it's kind of a thumbs up of course because this is line of sight it's not going to actually tell you how well these devices perform on a crowded train or whilst you're walking down let's say Kinshicho or what's another really busy station like uh, Shibuya or something like that. And the device that we will be spitting signal from is the Onkyo DPS-1 from which I can get L not LDAC but APTX, um, the Sony is already gone. So stick around and I hope that this video is helpful to you. Okay ladies and gents, the first one I'm going to test is Fio's BTR3, in fact the brand new one that I took out of the blister and just charged. So the DPS-1 which is sending the signal is right here at the base of the tripod. So it's essentially at the fulcrum or the base of the camera. Let's see how many paces we can get away from the camera right now. I count around 24 steps before the thing starts to cut out more than reasonably. It gets a little bit farther if, of course, I hold the device up or if it gets direct perfect line of sight. But when the body is slightly blocking the way, I'm getting around 20 probably at maximum. It's not bad, but I expected a little bit more. It looks like just like the BTR3 we're looking at about a maximum absolutely stable connection of around 20 paces or 20 meters out there which is just about to the corner just a little bit past I can get farther if it's exactly line of sight and I'm just dangling the device in front of the the signal here but that's not exactly as good as I thought it would be say I am impressed would be an understatement. I can't imagine why the BTR1K is doing so well at the moment. I mean of course it's the first time I've tested it and it's certainly better than the UBTR, the BTR1 and the BTR3 according to today. It could be another day it wouldn't test as well but at the moment it's getting out and I've tested this. We're almost 100 meters out by now.
This is a lot better performance than I expected because when I tested this earlier, it went out to about 10 meters and then after that, it never properly recovered. Today, as you'll notice, the get got all the way out to 25 meters, but it was completely unusable beyond that. I got all the way past where the BTR1K got into the weeds, literally into the weeds, and I didn't know what to do. I was stuck right at the, that's a swamp there where you see the, the, the cattails up there. I didn't know whether to go into the swamp, maybe to change into my swimmers or not. Today, as you can tell, with firmware 2.0, when I cannot go back, they tell me I will break the device. I only got to 35 meters, and before that, the first ticks of poor connection were around 10 meters. I'm extremely impressed with all of the FIOs in general. Again, there are quibbles for the BTR3 if you're holding chisels and you're making furniture, and that goes for the new unit and the old unit. But overall, damn good performance, and the Ear Studio from Ray's Radson is also an excellent device. I don't know what to say. Last week on firmware 1.4, I tested the ES100 out to 75 meters with some signal degradation, and all the way up to about 100, with pretty severe dropouts, but it was solid, absolutely solid to 40 meters, and it never had a tick around 10, it didn't have a tick around 25, it was the solidest of the bunch by quite a margin. But today with firmware 2.0, and after several different retries and retests, I've come to the same conclusion. Firmware 2 is either breaking my machine specifically, and makes it rather unusable for what used to be a completely usable situation, or it will apply more universally and all ES100 units will be affected. This is a problem with the engineering staff must fix because otherwise this device is as good as the BTR1K for connection and actually tests better. A big shame and because of that I withdraw my recommendation of the ES100 until there is a better firmware. And if you have any sense about you and you'd want to save your pennies, and you don't mind not supporting a Canadian company, I would say get as far away as you can from Blue Waves Get. Thank you very much. Leave a comment, a plus, a minus, and tell me how I can improve the channel. I appreciate hearing from you. I will see you next time.